My guess is that the tempo of this loop is somewhere around 80. That, oh, that may be a little slow. And uh, press play and see how this is looping now. Okay, I see that it's a little bit slow. There should be only one kick drum there. And I can bring up this tempo fractionally, maybe around 85. This is getting pretty close. And there, I think we have it right about there. So, even though the tempo says 85, you can see that uh, in the event that there, it's actually set at 85.62. For our next track, we're going to record the drums. We'll be using the loop record method. Loop record works similarly to the way you create a pattern on a drum machine. You set a length for your loop, and then each time the 2500 goes through the loop, it adds what you are playing to the previously recorded info. The length of the loop is determined by the endpoint. Our endpoint is now set at the point where we press stop on our first track. We want to set our endpoint so that we can record an exact four bar loop. To set a new endpoint, press the event soft button. The event editor will list every single event in the track. You can scroll through the track and change individual things, such as note numbers, velocities, and durations. This is great for fixing wrong notes or other small mistakes. As you scroll, you'll hear each event. Notice that at the beginning of the track, you will find program and bank changes, along with initial volume and pan controller amounts. The 2500 creates these events when you first record the track. Scroll to the end of the track to change the endpoint. Since I'm making a four bar loop, I'll scroll over one parameter and type five, one, and then zero, zero, zero. Then of course I hit enter. Now press done, then exit. Since I've made changes to the track, the 2500 asks if I want to save the song. Press yes. I'll be saving back over my old song, so I'll choose replace. Now I'll record my drum track. Set the record track to two and call up a drum program. Go back to the miscellaneous page and set the record mode to the loop. I'm also going to set this track for input quantization. You can actually quantize during the recording process by setting the quantization parameters on this page instead of quantizing in the editor. Once again, I'll choose 16th note quantization and 100%. Now return to the main page. Make sure that the mode is set to merge. This way, it will add what you record each time it runs through your loop. If mode is set to erase, then each time you record in the loop, it will replace what was there previously. If you make a mistake while recording in loop mode, you can erase an individual note by holding the Enter button and striking the note that you want erased during the point in time you want to erase the note. what I'll do is erase that. So what we're going to do is hold down the enter button and press that key of the crash symbol. So now it'll be gone. Next I'll add the bass drum and the snare to the same track.
And you'll notice it's quantized as I play it in. Good. Now we hit stop. Then it'll ask you if you want to save the song. Hit yes. And we can replace. Now I'll record a comping part for track three. For this part, I don't want to use input quantization, so I'll go back and set that to 0%. Then I'll go in advance to record on track three and pick a sound. Now we're ready to record. stop, I'll save it, and replace. Now we'll show another example of track editing. Go back into the track editor and scroll to change. First track. This allows you to modify or scale note velocities or the values of a specific controller. We'll scale the velocities on track three to 80%. You can use the offset parameter to add or subtract a specific amount. On constant, the mode parameter will affect all the notes in the range equally. You can set it to a positive or negative ramp so that the change occurs gradually from the start point to the end point of your defined range. For example, you could scale back the velocities over a four-bar phrase using a negative ramp to create a decrescendo. I'll leave it on constant. And we'll save. Next, we'll record one more track. Go to track four, and I'll pick a sound. And then we can start playing. Good. Now I can save this and then replace. I'm going to show you how to do a program change for the top of a song. Uh, here I have a drum program on channel one. When I press play, uh, I, I hear the particular drum set. And if I change, uh, with the program field highlighted, I can change different drum kits and choose a kit that I like the best. I like this particular kit. When I press stop, um, the this, this song uh, uh, updates its program parameter, its volume, pan, and tempo settings. Um, if I want to put the program change in, all I do is press record, uh, select the drum set I want here with the alpha wheel, and press stop. And uh, my program change is now in the song. And as I said, this will also work the same for volume, pan, and tempo. I'm going to show one more example of the track editor. Let's call up the erase function. Set the events to mono pressure. If your keyboard has mono pressure and was set to transmit it, you may have recorded a lot of pressure events into your sequence. If the sounds that you're playing do not utilize pressure, then these events waste a lot of memory. So we're going to get rid of them. Instead of erasing the pressure from just one track, we want to do this to all the tracks. By pressing both the channel bank buttons together, it switches to all tracks. Now I'm going to call up a version of this song I already completed with additional tracks. We're going to look at the mix page. As you can see, this page resembles the layout of a mixing board. You can set initial levels for each track or record changes in real time. 
You can play the song and change the levels and pan position for various tracks. In addition, you can mute individual tracks using the eight mode buttons. You can access all 16 tracks by switching from 1 through 8 or 9 through 16. The muting is temporary and is in effect only while on the mix page. Let's do some of that. Once you have the settings you desire, you can press keep to update the initial volume and pan settings found at the beginning of the track. If you want to record changes in real time, then you would record while on the mix page and make your changes. You'll need to start with new song in order to create your own arrangement. Now we'll press edit and then arrange. On this page, you can take various songs and string them together to form an arrangement. This is extremely useful for saving memory. The 2500 has a limitation of 64K for any object except a sample. If you have a long and complex song, you can break it down into sections and save each section as a separate song. Then, you can use the Arrange Editor to put the sections together. If you have a section that repeats, you don't need to save it twice. You can have the Arrange Editor play it twice. Let's look at the parameters on this page. Each part of the arrangement is called a step. For each step, you can assign a song. I have song number 202 assigned as step 1. As I scroll through the different steps, you can see that I've assigned a different song for each step. To add new steps, you press the Add button. You can delete a step with the Delete button. For each step, you can choose to mute individual tracks. In this way, you could assign the same song to two steps, but mute different tracks in each step. Then, when you play the arrangement, you will hear two different sections, even though they are using the same song. You can also transpose it a step and have it repeat any number of times. One great feature is that you can trigger steps from various keys and then play along with them. You can spread your different sequences across the keyboard and trigger them in any order you want to create arrangements in real time. As you can see, I have assigned the first song to C2 to G2. The second song is assigned to C3 to G3. And then I have the last song, song number th step number three, assigned to C4 to G4. Since the songs are assigned to a group of keys, as I play up and down the keyboard, the entire sequence will be transposed. However, I don't want the drums to transpose because the drums would trigger different keys that would lead to different sounds. To prevent this from happening, you tell the 2500 that a specific track is a drum track so that it will not respond to transposition. You set this parameter on the common page in the editor. So if I go to song 202 and look in the editor, you will see the track 3 is set as the drum track. There it is, D on the drum track. Now I'll go back to my arrangement song. Okay. You need to designate a channel to be used for triggering the different steps. Press edit and set the trigger channel to 16. That's right here. Now we'll go back to the main page. Set the record track to 16. I'll call up a lead sound to jam on. The keys that are assigned to trigger the steps will not play the lead sound, but the other keys will, providing you're using the local keyboard channel parameter. 
I want to have both hands free for playing the lead. To do this, I'll go to the Arrange Editor and set Latch On. Highlight any parameter except Program and hit Edit. If Program is highlighted, you will go to the Program Editor when you press Edit. Now with Latch set to on, when you strike a key, it will play entirely through the song assigned to that key, even if I let go of the key. With Latch off, the song stops the moment that I release the key. comes with a built-in effects processor. In addition to this basic effects processor, there's an option called the KDFX, which adds a great deal more flexibility in terms of both effects programming and routing. For this video, however, we'll only be talking about the basic effects processor. As we mentioned at the beginning of the video, the standard effects only come out of the mix outs. So make sure you have cables plugged into mix and not to the A separate outs if you want to work with the standard effects. Press the Effects Mode button. The first two parameters on this page are self-explanatory. You can select the effect you want and set the wet, dry mix. But the other two parameters, Effects Mode and Effects Channel, are important to understand because they determine how the effects processor is controlled. The Effects Here function is a single effect processor. You can combine different effects together but they can't be split up between programs or channels. In other words, whichever effect you pick is going to affect all of the programs. You can't have reverb for one program and delay on another. So you use the effects mode parameter to choose what will control the effects processor. The default value is auto. This means that whichever mode you are currently in is controlling the effects. Each program and setup has an effect assigned to it. So if you go to program mode and call up a program, the effect assigned to that program on the effects page in the program editor will be called up. For example, if we go to program mode, call up piano, and then go back to the effects mode, you will see the effect is small hall. If you go back to the program mode, call up clav, and then go back to the effects. And you'll see that the effect is now stereo flanger. The same would apply for setups. The effects mode parameter works in conjunction with the effects channel. The default value for this is current. This means that the program assigned to the MIDI channel is currently in the display and in control of the effects. But you can also set this to a specific channel. For example, you could set it so that the program on channel one is in control of the effects. As we mentioned, in auto, either a program or a setup can be in control, depending on which mode you're in. You can also set this parameter to setup or program only. The final value is master. When set to master, the effect that you call up on this page will be the one you hear, no matter what program you call up. In this situation, the effects channel becomes the channel you would use to send program changes on to call up effects. You can also use this channel to send controllers to alter parameters in real time. If you're using the K2500 sequencer, there are a couple of options you can take. If you set effects mode to master, you can choose your effect on the effects page and it will remain at that setting. If you put it in auto, then you will have to use the effect channel parameter, which is found on the edit common page of the song. In this case, whichever program is on the effect channel will be controlling the effects. 
all of this is quite complicated and can get a little confusing we suggest that you review the information in your manual to make sure you have a clear understanding of these concepts although there is only one effect which can affect all the programs you do have the option as to whether or not to route a program through the effects processor you can set this in one of two places the first is on the output page of the program editor call up a program press edit then scroll till you find the output page the pair parameter determines which output pair is used a runs through the effects while B and C and D are dry keep in mind that this parameter acts on a per layer basis so you have to program each layer the way you want the second way to control output is from the MIDI channels page which we'll talk about in the next section on MIDI another thing you may wish to do is have a different amount of wet dry mix per MIDI channel Due to the way this basic effects processor works with the 2500, there is no simple way to do this. However, it is possible to do this by use of some vast programming. In order to accomplish this, you must choose an algorithm that has two outputs from the final stage. An example of this is algorithm 2, which uses a Panner DSP. Here's how you do it. Notice that this algorithm takes one signal and splits it into two, an upper wire and a lower wire. Once you have chosen the algorithm, scroll and select the output page. You will notice that there are two values for each parameter. To the left, you see U and L. This stands for the upper wire and the lower wire on the algorithm. Set the upper pair for A and the lower pair for B. Next, scroll and select the F3 position page. This control page determines how much of the signal is sent to the upper wire and how much to the lower wire. If you set the adjust parameter to 100%, it will be fully on the upper wire and routed to A. If you set it to negative 100, it will be fully on the lower wire and routed to B. And of course, any value in between will mix the two wires appropriately. You can even program a control source so you could change it in real time if you want it. Although this method works perfectly for controlling the amount of wet dry mix per program, the limitation is that you can only use algorithms which have two output wires. So you may not be able to use it if the sound of your program depends on a different algorithm, which does not have the two wires. The 2500 comes with quite a few preset effect programs, but you can also create your own. There are two ways to enter the effects editor. You can go to the effects mode and press edit, or you can get there from within the program editor. Since we're already in the program editor, we'll use this method. Scroll and select the effects page. With the effect parameter highlighted, press edit. The effect processor contains 27 different effect configurations. These configurations include reverb, delay, chorus, EQ, and mixtures of various effects. To select the different configurations, you can use the channel bank buttons. As you change configurations, the various parameters available for editing will change. Once you have found the configuration you want, you can scroll through the various parameters and set them for your specifications. When you're finished, you can name and save the effect in the same manner as saving a program. Press exit and you jump back to the program editor. Notice that there are two other parameters below wet dry mix. You can choose two aspects of the effect which you can control in real time. These will change depending on the type of effect you have, you have chosen. The adjust parameter lets you set an initial value. You can assign any control source and set the depth to determine how much change you want, just like we did with wet dry mix in the programming tutorial. This method works as long as effects mode is set to auto or program. 
If you have the effects mode set to master, then specific controller numbers are hardwired to specific parameters. Consult your reference manual for a list of these controller numbers. In MIDI mode, you'll find all parameters that control how the 2500 sends and receives information. There are three pages in MIDI mode, transmit, receive, and channels. When you first enter MIDI mode, you'll be on the transmit page. If you have the rack, you probably not need to work with the parameters on this page. There are a few things worth mentioning, however. If you're using the local keyboard channel parameter that we described at the beginning of this video, the K2500 will actually send incoming MIDI information out the MIDI out port. You can then use the controller parameters in the right column of the screen to remap one type of MIDI controller to another. Consult your manual for more on this. If you turn the buttons parameter on, the 2500 will send out a SysX, SysX message for each button you press. If you record these messages into an external sequencer, you can play back the sequence to remote control various changes, such as disk loading or changing other parameters. Press the Receive button. Here you'll find parameters that control how the 2500 responds to incoming MIDI data. You would normally want to leave the MIDI mode set to multi, so that the 2500 will respond multi timbrally if you have problems with the 2500 not responding to sustain pedal commands from your controller, try setting the all notes off parameter to ignore. Otherwise, just leave it on normal. The program change type parameter lets you select the method the 2500 uses to respond to program and bank changes. The default is extended. If you load in the general MIDI disk that came with your instrument, this will change to QA 0 through 127. This sets the 2500 so that it will only call up the 128 general MIDI programs you loaded in. If you then want to be able to access all of the other programs, you will need to set it back to extend it. You can also load the reset master file on the disk, which will change back this parameter along with the other master parameters that were changed when you loaded the GM disk. For an explanation on the different program change types, consult your manual. You will notice that the velocity and pressure map parameters are found on the MIDI receive and transmit pages, as well as on the master page. Each page is used for a different aspect of control. If you have the rack, you will want to use the parameters in the receive page. This will control how the 2500 responds to incoming velocity and pressure messages. If you have the keyboard, you will want to use the parameters on the master page. This will control how the 2500 responds to its own keyboard. Finally, you can use the parameters on the transmit page to scale the velocity and pressure being sent out of the MIDI output, especially useful if you have a slave synth that is sensitive to higher velocities. Velocity and pressure maps work by assigning musical dynamics to specific velocities and scaling them between each setting. There are seven different velocity maps and seven different pressure maps included in the 2500, but you can also make your own. To create a velocity map, highlight the parameter and press Edit. You will see a graph showing the map. Along the top, you will see parameters representing eight different dynamic amounts. The numbers indicate actual velocities that are tied to that dynamic. You can scroll to each parameter and change its value. Once you have something you like, you can name it and save that map. Pressure maps work the same, even though they may be used to control things other than amplitude. Although it isn't related to MIDI, the Receive page is also where you will find the SCSI ID for the 2500. The default SCSI ID for the 2500 is number 6, but it can be changed to any number between 0 and 7. Just make sure it is different from the IDs of other SCSI devices in your chain. For descriptions of the rest of the parameters on this page, consult your manual. The Channels page contains parameters that can be set for each specific channel. 
The display only shows one channel at a time. To view the various channels, use the channel bank buttons. The enable parameter.